so we know what the complexity of the Minkowski sum between our inverted robot and a single obstacle is. But to compute the free space, we have to take the union of all these configuration polygons. And we have to figure out why the union of these is not too large. And for that we need the concept of pseudodisks. Let's define what this is. If we have two objects O1 and O2 in the plane, then they are a pair of pseudodisks if the boundary of the first object intersect with the interior of the second object is connected, and the other way around, the boundary of the second intersect with the interior of the first one is connected. So let's look at these four examples here. In the first one, the boundary of O1 intersected with O interior of O2 is exactly this part here. This is connected. Boundary of O2 intersected with interior of 1 is this part here that's also connected, so this is a pair of pseudodisks. Here, the boundary of O1 intersected with the interior of two, O2 is not connected because it goes up to here, then the boundaries meet, and then we have a second connected component here. So this is not a pair of pseudodisks. Here it's even clearer. Here we have two connected components, this one and this one, and also in the red we have these two connected components. So this is also not a pair of pseudodisks. Here the blue boundary lies completely inside the interior of the red, and the red boundary does not lie at all in the interior of the blue, so this is also a pair of pseudodisks. So these two are fine, and these two are fine, these two are not. Now we call a point a boundary crossing between these two objects if the boundary of the one object crosses at P from the interior to the exterior of O2. So we have here two boundary crossings. And the first observation is if we have a pair of polygon pseudodisks, then we have at most two boundary crossings. Here we have two, here we have zero. Here where we had four, this was not a pair of pseudodisks. Here we had three, also not a pair of pseudodisks. If we have more, it's even worse. It's definitely not a pair of pseudodisks. Now we want to show that the configuration polygons that we get are pairs of pseudodisks. For that, we first need a lemma about the extreme directions of convex polygons. So let's say we have two interior disjoint convex polygons in the plane. Then there is some direction, D1, where P1 is more extreme than P2. That means if I take the, the extreme point of their union, that's a point of P1. And there's also a second one, maybe. Here, again, P1 is more extreme, because the extreme point on this direction is from P1. Now the observation is that for all the directions between them, either here or here, for all the directions P1 has to be more extreme than P2. To see why that holds, we can basically look at the edges of the convex hull of these two polygons. We first follow some edges of P1, then we follow some edges of P2, and in between it might be that we have some edge that's in neither of those that connects two points of their work boundary. Now for everything here, from the first edge of P2 up to this point, everything is more extreme in the direction of P2. Everything here from the first edge of P1 up to this, everything is more extreme um, with respect to P1. And here in between, between these two edges, whatever direction we take here, this point is the most extreme one, so here it's equally extreme. So we have one interval where P1 is more extreme, one where P2 is more extreme, and here one where they are equally extreme. It might be that this one does not exist, it might be that we have two of those at both sides, but we definitely have these single intervals for P1 and P2. Now we want to use this. So if we have two convex polygons with disjoint interiors, those are basically our obstacles, and we have another convex polygon, this is basically our inverted um, robot. Then if we take the Minkowski sum of P1 
with R and the Minkowski sum of P2 with R, these are basically our configuration polygons, then those form a pair of pseudodisks. And we prove this via contradiction. So we want to show that CP1, the configuration polygon 1, if we cut out the configuration polygon P2, then this is connected. So let's suppose it's not connected, so it looks like this. We have our configuration polygon 1. If we cut out configuration polygon 2, we get two connected components. We know that the Minkowski sum between two convex polygons is again convex, so we must have some points in these connected components. And that means that there has to be some direction in which Q is more extreme than all of CP2, and some direction where S is more extreme than all of CP2. So we have two directions where CP1 is more extreme than CP2. Again, both are convex polygons, so we can use our observation that we had on the previous page that tells us that either for all the directions in this interval, CP1 is more extreme than CP2, or for all the points in this interval, CP1 is more extreme than CP2. But this contradicts that CP2 intersects our CP1 here. If we get two connected components, that means that CP2 must contain at least these parts. And that means that it, for these parts at least they are equally extreme, if not, like in this case, CP2 is more extreme. So this is a contradiction to the previous observation. And that means that we actually do have a pair of pseudodisks. So of all our configuration polygons that uh, we get from the Minkowski sums form pairs of pseudodisks. And that means that they pairwise intersect at most twice. And from that, in the next part, we can get the complexity of our whole configuration space and the runtime of the algorithm.